recently joined the Canadian Football League, but spent a number of years with U Sports. What is the position taken by both U Sports and the Canadian Football League with regard to cannabis use? So it's, it's an interesting contrast, uh, and it's not an uncommon one, a contrast between professional leagues and amateur sports. Uh, so a professional league has a players association to negotiate with, uh, a union, uh, and it has the luxury of essentially designing its own uh, drug plan. Uh, so at the CFL, uh, we have a drug policy. That drug policy deals with performance enhancing drugs specifically, and it doesn't deal with recreational drugs. So. Uh, whether or not a player has uh, used marijuana, cocaine, setting aside legality or illegality, that's not something that uh, our testing reports to us, and that's not something that a player would be punished for. So as long as they're within the law, uh, and I should point out, within workplace requirements. So when this first came out, there were lots of questions about what, what's this going to mean, uh, not just in sports, but in workplaces. You can't show up for work drunk even though that's been legal forever. So you also can't show up for work high. Uh, that's not uh, any different in sports and otherwise. But uh, as far as punishing a player, as long as they're within the law and, and as long as they're within their workplace obligations, it's not something that, uh, that is a CFL issue internally, domestically. Obviously, there's cross-border and all of that. U Sports was a very different scenario and a really interesting one uh, for me as a learning experience. Uh, the decriminalization definitely had an, an impact uh, and for a lot of the reasons that, that were mentioned, U Sports is a signatory uh, with the CCES to an agreement where we contract with CCES to oversee the anti-doping uh, testing and enforcement. And as part of that, it means we're a signatory to WADA. So notwithstanding what's legal or illegal here, it's about what's permitted or not permitted uh, under the World Anti-Doping Code. Uh, and as Sarah mentioned, not only is cannabis illegal in some places, it's very illegal, it's unethical, it's, it's viewed very differently from here. So our student athletes in Canada are governed by that WADA code. And the consequence can be, uh, and it's a severe one, CCES doesn't view uh, uh, cannabis as performance enhancing. Canada doesn't view cannabis as illegal. And we have 15,000 student athletes in Canada uh, at the U Sports level many of whom are playing really at a, at a high level, recreational level. They don't have any illusions of going pro. They don't have illusions of going to the Olympics. This is a value add to their university experience. And yet if they test positive for a legal, non-performance enhancing substance in competition, they get an anti-doping rule violation. And that stays on their record. And that's something that can be Googleable by their uh, potential employers years down the road. And so that's a real challenge. Uh, and that's something that we had a, an issue with. We dealt with CCES. As I left, one of the things we were working on was, can CCES lobby to change that classification so that it won't have that same impact, specifically for, again, these tens of thousands uh, of student athletes where it just, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So it's a very different uh, view on the same issue uh, and an interesting contrast, again, between amateur and pro sports.